My name is Catherine, I'm 17 years old, and I am a victim of texting and driving. I still replay all the ways that this accident has hurt me, my friends, my family, and their families. But the worst part is the blame and the hate. Everyone blames Serena. Yes, it was something that could have been prevented, but it's not like she meant to do it. It wasn't on purpose. She is still a victim of texting and driving, just as much as the rest of us. She has learned her lesson, I can assure you that. It's just terrible that Jake had to lose his life for the message to get across. But how do they expect us to heal when we can't heal together and forgive? To this day, I am still a believer that everything happens for a reason. The five of us were going to meet with Josephine and Nathan, but we weren't sure if they had left yet, or if they were even coming. Anyways, I was waiting on a text or call from them. We all were. But I was expecting Joseph to text Catherine or Emma. She should have known better than to text me. She knew I was driving. So we were about halfway to North Bay and my phone buzzed. So naturally I reached for my phone. I was just reading the message on the screen. Four words, that's all. We'll be there soon. Four words in half a second, that's all it was. And before I could understand what was happening, I was blinded by headlights and there was the sound of metal colliding with metal like nails on a chalkboard. It's really all a blur and it, it felt like hours before help arrived. But we read things when we drive all the time. Billboards, signs, bumper stickers, they're meant to distract us. You can't punish me for reading. Don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like I killed him with my two hands. Please forgive me. We were on our way to the movies. Five of us were in one car. Our two other friends were quite a ways behind us, but they were going to meet us there. Serena got a text and answered it. I heard the sound of brakes in front of us, and before I could say anything, we hit a car straight on. I can't get the image out of my mind. Every time I close my eyes, I remember those few seconds and the minutes that followed. When I realized the man on the hood of the car was someone I went to high school with, I can't get the images out of my mind. The screams, the crying, the blood, and those lifeless eyes looking through me. I'll never forget them. Why? Serena, why would you do such a terrible thing? You could have handed me your phone. You should have handed me your phone. Your selfish actions have left scars, broken limbs, the unforgettable memory, and the fact that you are a killer. Your excuse is that you shouldn't be punished because you're just reading the text and not answering it? I am so done with you. I wish you would have used your brain. All of our class discussions are not texting and driving. I wish you would have known better. You've ruined our lives and killed somebody's son, somebody's friend. I want nothing to do with you. You have no, none of my sympathy. And I hope you brought in jail. We were almost there. That's all I wanted to say to Serena. How was I supposed to know she would check her phone while driving? I figured she would give it to someone else in the car. It would have only taken a year. Can you answer this for me? But no. Instead of being careful, she was reckless. It was terrible. Serena had swerved into the other lane of the two-lane highway and hit the oncoming car. She just drifted over, killing him. Jake, I saw his body. We were the first ones there. His body was on the hood of the car. We came up behind the crash, and I started screaming. I thought to myself, it can't be him, and I couldn't breathe. We called 911, and they came and put Jake in a body bag, and I cried, and I cried, and I clung to Nate to keep me standing up, and I watched Serena being put in the back seat of a police car and I watched her being taken away. And she deserves it. She deserves everything that they decided. All it took was a here. Can you answer this for me? It's the nightmares that make my nights terrifying and my days unbearable. And I can't forgive her for this. When I was three years old, I sang on stage for the first time. The song was, you are my sunshine, and my papa cried in the front row. 
I was so happy when I finally memorized the words and the climbing movement of each note. You are my sunshine. It was such a familiar song, so gentle and soothing. But now, it's just a symbol of my haunted memories from that day. Sometimes, I hear snippets of the word in my head, and for a fraction of a second, it's back. And then it's gone again. I can't remember. I can't remember the words, and I can't remember the tune. All I can remember is the limp bodies, and the blood, all the blood, and the guilt. Guilt that grasps me by the ankles and drags me to the aftermath of the crash over and over again. I remember where we were going. The movies with Josie and Nate. I remember the tangy sound of the seatbelts click. But now all I can remember is humming, you are my sunshine. And then suddenly everything was chaos. We all lost so much that day. Freedom, friendships, life. A song I just can't seem to remember. But Serena has all the songs in the world. She has every song she could sing. She probably even has You Are My Sunshine, and I don't. Serena has all the time in the world. So much time she could bathe in it. Let it slip in her hands like silk, but Jake doesn't. You have all this time, Serena. And in that time, I want you to hear my favorite song. The one I can't remember because of you. I want the words, you are my sunshine, to play in your head until you can't take it anymore, and you go and sing, just looking at a flash of sunlight. I want you to hear it so often that it's the only song you can remember. And when you hear it, I want you to think about what you did to us. I don't know what to do. It hurts. I remember the day up until it crashed so clearly. We were driving. We're going on what was called an adventure. June 13th is going to be an amazing day. It's going to be a dream day. The day every girl dreams of. The day I can finally start planning my dream wedding. But now, June 13th will just be remembered as the day I lost my best friend. And the ability to walk. The ability to create a family. And the ability to live a normal life. I'm paralyzed from the waist down because a car full of teenagers my own age picked up a phone while behind the wheel. I watched my best friend die. It was there. I saw it all. I heard it all. And I will always remember it all. Monday, June 13th, 9.45 a.m. I heard my heart. I love you. This is a piece of poppy. We were on our way to meet with Serena and Jake. I was a couple minutes late when we were up because we were looking for my new CD. And I just, I was so excited. I just, I wanted to show it to her more than anything. We always shared an interest in music, so I thought she would really enjoy it. When I got to her house, I turned the volume in full blast. We were both really enjoying the music when she turned it down to tell me that she was going to text Serena, saying that we were on our way. She turned the music back on, or back up, and we just kept driving. We were driving down the highway when I heard, Pull over! Pull over! I immediately slammed on the brakes, and we both jumped out and ran over to get a better look. I looked over at Josie, who I could tell was in shock. Why couldn't you have just asked someone to check your phone? Was it really that hard? Hey Emma, can you check that for me? Eight words. That's all it would have taken. You could have prevented everything. If you weren't so stupid, Jake would still be alive. This is all your fault. You did this to him. I can't go a day without thinking about it. I mean, how could I? Someone died. Sure, my injuries might not have been as bad if I was wearing a seatbelt, but they wouldn't have happened if, at all if Serena hadn't checked her phone. It's all her fault. It should have waited. A text isn't worth lives. In our head, what if the earth was flat? What if everything was free? What if I hadn't died? What if she chose not to use that half second of her life to take away the rest of mine? What if I graduated high school, gone to university, 
traveled the world with the love of my life. What if my parents didn't have to stare at their child's lifeless body, while their minds clung under the last thought of me? Or my brother, who had to endure the sympathetic eyes of those who didn't know what to say, and the endless force of the words, I'm sorry for your loss. What if my friends didn't have to stare at the empty chair where I used to sit and exchange empty glasses with each and empty glances with each other? All of them still hoping that this was some sick joke or bad dream that I'm not really gone. Hypothetical questions are meant to tease and taunt our minds, but I'm not a hypothetical question. I'm a victim. And what if we stopped calling victims victims and started calling them by their name, their story, the lives that they lived before their accidents? I'm 17 years old, and my life was taken away by the hands of a thoughtless person who wasn't aware of the control they had behind the wheel, the control they had over my life and the lives of those around me. Because of the half second that that thoughtless person used, all of my seconds 